Hey, this is Dan from SoCal Creature, and we're checking out the Broad Museum in Los Angeles. Artists rarely do the same thing over and over again. Art is about the new, doing things in a new way. Eli Broad. Entering the museum is a bit like exiting the womb, if you remember what that was like. I remember it like it was yesterday. The museum, that is. Immediately upon emerging into this new world, you're assaulted with the vivid color blast of Jeff Koons's tulips. Let's talk about Jeff... Whoa, hold on. Let's talk about Jeff Koons. This American artist is most widely known for his polished stainless steel sculptures that resemble gigantic mylar balloons, like something from the dreams of a child the night before their birthday, or the nightmares of a utility lineman. Keep these away from power lines. Speaking of kids' birthdays, you're gonna need party hats. Jeff thought of that too. This one I like because it looks like it could be a collage from magazine clippings, but it's actually an oil on canvas that's over 11 feet wide. And lastly, Triple Hulk Elvis II was a big hit with the kids. Our next stop was the Roy Lichtenstein rooms. You'll notice that Lichtenstein changed up his style many times throughout his life. But his most well-known paintings are this comic book style that mimics the Ben Day dots used in four color printing. Lichtenstein came to prominence in an era where the commercial art world was melding with the fine art world and was a leader in that movement. But no one exemplifies that movement more than Andy Warhol, who we'll see in the next room. It's been said that Andy Warhol's celebrity portraits are so prevalent that in many cases they're more recognizable than the celebrities themselves. When you hear the name Marilyn Monroe, do you imagine a photo or movie that she was in? Or do you imagine an Andy Warhol portrait? What about Liz Taylor? Chairman Mao? Elvis. For me at least, it's often Andy Warhol's portraits. What's the first thing that comes to your mind when you see this image? That would be Grizzly Adams for me. Moving on. Robert Therian's Under the Table is a fun place to feel like a kid again. Initially, I got tickets for this particular day so that we could see the reopening of Yayoi Kusama's Infinity Mirrored Room, but that turned out to not be open yet. So this mirrored box called Longing for Eternity was our consolation prize. Still pretty cool. Walking into the room for Jean-Michel Basquiat has a very different vibe than the rest of the rooms in the museum. Like these paintings aren't meant so much for your enjoyment as they are a provocation. Look at the anguish shown in these maniacal faces. The museum has hundreds of other works of art by more artists than I can remember. And did I mention it's free? We just had to reserve a time slot on their website. I brought my son and one of his friends, and for both of them, this was their first experience at an art museum. So I wasn't sure if they were gonna like it, but they both ended up having a blast. If you like this video, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button, and be sure to check out this art playlist with tons of other locations in SoCal where you can see art, all of which are free, because I'm cheap. Thanks for watching.